This is a new to me Mead LX200 GPS. And when I turn it on, the display screen on this AutoStar 2 will flash a little bit, show just a little bit of red, and then pretty much go dark. But if I push the mode button a lot, um, I can use the left, right, up, down button to move the motors around. So I know the base and the motors somewhat work. I've been told online that the screen is the problem. It needs to be replaced. Um, so I'm going to unscrew this guy, figure out which version of this controller it is and which screen I need, and see if I can get a screen online and do this repair. Um, so on the back here, there's some stickers. They say US patent number 6304376. And then down below it says 01110198. Version 1.3 made in Taiwan. Um, so this is version 1.3 of this guy. Looks like it was manufactured, if I'm going to guess, the 98 is 1998. I believe I also have in here a sticker that says battery for something 19. So I've been told this guy was sent back to Mead. For new electronics at some point, so possibly they put a new battery in for like a real-time clock or something. Right, using a small Phillips screwdriver, I extracted four screws from the back of this guy here, those four holes. Um, when this came off, there's a little red window. That red window is for this utility light that shines forward. There appear to also be four LEDs that shine sideways into this plastic light guide that lights through the back of the display screen here. Now, I've seen some diagrams online that seem to indicate that the shape of this little cutout and that connector um, will indicate to me which version of the screen I need to get. So I'm taking note of kind of this offset shape and the connector there. Also down here, there's a 0140 in there. And this is KB in a circle, and then M, and then 94V-0. So those are some numbers there. Now I also note that this connector looks slightly angled, like maybe it's not plugged in fully. So first thing I'm going to try is just taking out the connector and plugging the connector back in to see if maybe it's just a loose connector. All right, so how this connector works is there's a kind of a top part here and if you put your thumbnails on both sides of that top part and push it that way, it'll pop out. Um, so I have popped it out, and I believe that loosens the wire. So the wire here has some like carbon connectors on it, and I've been told those carbon connectors degrade over time and you lose connectivity to the screen. Um, but first, I'm just going to blow on it a little bit and then stick it back in and reconnect it in and just see if maybe that'll fix something before I try buying a new screen. So with that connector disconnected, you can lift the circuit board just straight up out of there. Um, and there's the little keypad membrane in front of it. The screen, I'm not sure if it's glued in or if it's just sitting there being held in by this thing back here and the circuit board. So I'm trying not to turn this guy upside down. I don't want the screen falling out. Um, we're going to reassemble it and then hopefully it'll just work. If not, I'm probably going to have to buy a new screen. And so if I'm counting correctly, there's 14 connectors on this. So I think that's important too. I think some of the screens have 14 and some have 15. So it looks like I need a 14 connector screen. So this ribbon connector goes in and out very easily once that thing's pulled forward. Um, in an attempt to keep it seated all the way back, I have placed a screwdriver on top of it. And due to the loop, it's kind of pushing it back, just putting a little bit of force in the back. And then I'm going to take two fingernails and one on either side and snap this shut. All right, I got that snap shut. To me, visually, it looks like it's more even. It's not angled like it was before. I don't know if that's going to help. We're going to put it back together. I've gotten the serial numbers. I've gotten the size, the number of counts. So I think I can buy a new screen. So that little red window I have my finger on wants to fall out when you turn this over. So I'm just holding it with my finger when I set this thing back down on here to keep it from falling out. I just tighten those four screws down just finger tight. It's mostly to hold them in place and so I don't lose the screws. If this doesn't work, I'm going to have to send off for a screen. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Is it going to be just as easy as resetting that cable? Well, it actually showed up a little better than it did before. It's not great, though. I still can't see it. It looks like it's kind of angle dependent, maybe. Um, 
I'm seeing a little more there, but I think it is definitely a problem with the cable connector. Um, I actually, that was showing up more than I had before, but no, it looks like I'm going to need a new screen. And I'm not sure if it's the screen that's bad or if it's the cable connector itself, but you buy them as a unit. You can almost read something there if you get it exactly the right angle. It's just not really usable. All right, my order from Buttonworks came in. And so we now have a little screen that has a remove film on the top and a tiny little diode. Okay, let's try replacing the screen. Okay, so I just want to make sure I get the orientation of the new screen correct with respect to the old screen. So here's the screen that's new. It says remove film on the back here. So I'm assuming there's some film on the back. And the um, contacts here, the gold is facing up. So the old screen, when I push this button, and pull this out. The contacts are facing down here. Um, so I believe this screen will go in like that. This will fold over and then go into there. Um, so the orientation is this way when we want to put it in. Now, the old screen is in here and it did not just fall out when I was playing with it before. Now that I have a replacement screen, I'm pretty sure the old screen is bad. Um, I am going to put a little bit of prying force on this, keeping in mind that it is glass, and see if it's glued in place or just kind of held in place. So I got a pry bar underneath it and it definitely is prying up a little there. I'm going to remove the keypads, just so I can see what's going on here. Um, there are two pieces of plastic on the bottom. I don't think those are clips. I think they're just alignment pieces of plastic. And there is a piece of plastic in front of the screen as well that does not come out. So I'm prying on this and it's moving up and down, but there appears to be some type of adhesive or tape or something under it, I think in this area. Um, and in, originally I saw this black mark here and I thought that was the adhesive, but there's some black stuff on the back of this other screen as well. So I think that's part of the screen and not sticking it to the bottom. Um, so I have this guy underneath here and it's making scary noises, but it is releasing. Okay, so I pulled that off. Yes, there was some double-sided tape right in there holding that down. Um, and so this screen was down like that, and the only real difference here is this guy isn't folded up in this nice little shape, and we will have to fold it up into that shape. So they say remove film, so I'm going to see if there's an easy way to find an edge of a film to remove. There's nothing sticking out off the edge that I can peel off of that I can see. There's what looks like a little bit of a glue spot there, which does not appear to be... No, there is a, there's a glue spot right there and a glue spot right there, so that's the same on both of these guys. Um, so when I put this back, it's going to go back in like so. I guess I'm going to pick at the corner a little. Oh, yep, yeah, okay. Just fingernail, pick at the corner, remove film, and then I'm going to try to place this back in here. There are some notches that fit it in, and I appear to have gotten it in the same spot. I'm trying to decide if it's all the way down as far as the other screen was, and it looks like it's basically in place there. Now, the back of this guy has this light guide that pushes the screen in and will hold that screen in. Now, I did just drop a screw somewhere, so I need to, there's the screw, but I didn't lose the screw, so. 
So at this point, I'm going to put the buttons back in. Okay, they're all seated. Now this guy goes into here. And I've pushed it in as far as it'll go. I'm taking advantage of the fact that the circuit board is below where this is so that guy doesn't get compressed. And I'm going to push that down and lock it in place. And then slide this guy up. And when I do that, it's going to bend this ribbon connector in the same way that it had been previously bent on the prior screen. Now to really test this well, we will need this light guide in the back there. So this yellow capacitor right here between the two big chips with white labels on them, that is labeled C43. Um, and there's a plus sign in the corner up here. Um, and so we're going to put this diode such that the black bar is touching or going towards the plus side of this guy and the other side is going to the other minus side of it. We're going to solder it to both ends of, this of uh, the capacitor there um, and that's where that diode will live. I soldered the diode over C43 there. Um, this guy looks like it might be slightly longer than this one here. I'm not certain it might just have been folded more on the other one. Um, I'm going to be careful putting this arm to kind of slide it in in this manner to try to catch that in this opening back here so it doesn't get pinched between the screen and the light guide there. Before I put it back in, I want to check all these buttons are settled correctly, so they all appear to be hitting the uh, circuit board properly. Um, and I also need to get this little red um, window into this hole here and keep it in there while I'm in the process of setting this guy up. So I basically have to put a little finger there to hold that window in place. And I'm holding the circuit board down with the other finger. It looks like there's room for the uh, light guide to go in there without any real problem. Yeah, I got, I got it captured behind the light guide there pretty easily. Alright, I got all the snaps together. Buttons still feel good. And now it's time to put the screws back in and try it out. All right, this is really the moment of truth where I find out if I just paid a lot of money for an optical tube and a tripod, or I got a good deal on a functioning telescope. Oh, that looks nice. Copyright 2001 Mead LX200 version 4.2G. Okay, so I think the electronics in the telescope are good. The hand star or the hand box, the Auto Star 2, is definitely working. I can read it. I'm not getting the horrible errors like, you know, misshapen letters and stuff. Um, so that's a good sign. That's a that's a relief to me. Now it's not 
progressing past, up oh, there it goes, just took a while. So zero to align, mode for menu. Um, so first thing I want to try is the contrast. Um, Let's see, how do I get this? All right, inside of the utilities menu, I found the display contrast. And so I've been pushing these things up and down until I liked it. So if you look at the bottom line there, it's not super easy to read right now, but I pushed the contrast in the upward direction with these little scroll things at the bottom. And um, now it looks really good. So I'm gonna press enter. And then they also, in addition to the contrast adjust, they have the brightness adjust. And so you can adjust the brightness to go down, which I don't want, or up all the way. So I'm doing this in the daytime. I'm gonna put this all the way up so I can use it in the daytime for calibrating and training and that type of stuff. Later on, I might go down a little bit at night. Um, everything's working, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be happy that I have a telescope that appears to be working now, or at least I can test it to see if it's working now. All right, and that's how you successfully fix the screen on an AutoStar 2.